Okay, let's get right to our number two. Deborah Tavares is back tonight. She of StopTheCrime.net, and I hope you'll visit the site. It is uh, really a powerhouse of truth and reality and wisdom and insight into what is going on here. And what is going on here is, quite frankly, as you heard last night, and if you've been listening to Deborah at all on this and other programs, we are the enemy. We are literally the enemy, and war is being waged against us 24 hours a day. If you go to StopTheCrime.net, just click on Deborah's name. I want you to look at the full load of the page. Just go right down below the horizontal scroll, and you'll see on the right there the NASA logo. NASA, Future of Warfare document. We're going to be talking about that a little bit more tonight and then some other things as well. Uh, Deborah Tavares has absorbed an enormous amount of information. Uh, she has begun to make more and more appearances on radio. Uh, her name is now being uh, linked commonly to what is most important. She just went up and did an interview with Barry Trower in Portland recently. He came over from England. Barry, of course, the pioneer of, in many ways, um, electronic warfare techniques, uh, EMF. And that's an interview you can see on StopTheCrime.net. Let's get right to it and say hello and welcome back to Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for having me back on again tonight. And I can only tell you, since doing a number of radio shows, I'm getting some extremely important information from people that listen. In particular, many people that are electronically targeted and or stalked by government agencies, yeah. which is, of course, hundreds of thousands of people all over the planet. And my major alert for everyone tonight, and of course we will be spending time with the NASA document, is to also go to StopTheCrime.net, and right underneath um, the uh, newly posted uh, artwork that David Dees did with the robot sitting in the chair giving termination notices to people, which is all true. Uh, of course, we know that increasingly critical, they say on page 66 of the NASA war document, mm -hmm. uh, are um, human limitations and downsides. And they tell us humans are too large, too heavy, too tender. Too tender. Motion. Too and tender. And they have slow, uh, they're slow physically and mentally, and they uh, cost a lot of money, and they have a negative value added. And, of course, everything now is being benchmarked on value or worth. But right underneath that um, art piece of art uh, is a flashing, and it says, Electronic Harassment, Stalking, Mind Control, New Leaked Documents Here. And this is the document that I uh, took up to Portland recently when I did the interview uh, with Barry Trower to discuss this. This is massive global mind control frequencies now being amped up globally. And everyone needs to understand what you're going to hear this evening about uh, targeted people that have been electronically and remotely targeted for decades. This is going to happen to each and every one of you to a certain degree. This is about thought control. This is about gaining your obedience by changing your moods and you're thinking. And this is being amped up. We're all, of course, under uh, multiple degrees of mind control. We always have been because of the media. But it's most important to understand that. And what's interesting that I found, Jeff, in the book called Between Two Ages uh, that Brzezinski wrote, he, he, of course, was the founder of the Trilateral Commission with sure. David Rockefeller. Sure. And he said that uh, they... They were excited about um, artificially excited electronic strokes. Oh, were they? Using, mm -hmm. using as a form of assassination. Mm -hmm. This is on page 57 of Between Two Ages. They say using the environment to manipulate behavior for national advantages, a system that would seriously impair the brain performance of very large populations. And they went on to talk about how timed artificially excited electronic strokes could lead to a pattern of oscillations that produce relatively high 
power levels over certain regions of the Earth. Hmm. Now, uh, hmm. what does that mean exactly? Well, uh, what we have all observed is a proliferation of installed and or deployed cell phone towers and antennas. And I can say that right now, this is proving to be the method in which uh, psychotronic warfare and thought intrusion can be most easily delivered. All of the wireless, which would also include your smart meters, because, of course, smart meters are being sold to save you energy, which, in fact, it has nothing to do with saving you any money at all. Uh, it's a network of frequencies that has been planned to structure thought patterns of ordinary Americans. Through the you know, market. at least, uh, Deborah, you can see smart meters when they're installed on homes, but trying to see microwave EMF antennas for cell phones is a real tricky proposition now. Now, there is a website you can go, and if you folks think that you don't have any antenna, uh, in your neighborhood, I'm using the term in the plural, uh, you better guess again. Uh, give us that website where they can go look and dial yes, in their and, address. And, and, antennasearch.com. Yeah. And I would recommend everyone... That's a shocker. Uh, it is a shock. It will show you, you'll key in two opportunities, one for cell phone towers, one for cell towers, and one for antennas. Download those and keep them in a safe place and know where the towers are nearest your home, because those are the weaponized technologies that Brzezinski talked about, and the documents, the NASA war document on page 98, says the use of towers and microwave frequencies. They know exactly what these frequencies do to us. In fact, on page uh, 50, I believe it is, of the NASA war document, they talk about the effects of low-powered microwave frequencies, and they say... They admit that it will cause behavioral problems, seizures, gross alteration in brain function, and 30 to 100 percent increases in brain blood flow and cause lethality and or death. They tell us that. There is no more guessing what this is all about. It is written. It's in all the military documents, in the Fort Meade military document. They tell us 100 percent mm -hmm. of the population will be affected. That is you. That is your neighbor. And sadly, there are far too many people right now that have been targeted and experimented on for years, decades. And experimenting is over. It is now over. And this is now becoming the method in which they will bring about compliance of the global population. As they said in Brzezinski's book, for, for um, the purposes of obedience and following the new world order. Right. All, all, about. Yeah. All the groundwork was done with the early programs like MK Ultra, Project Monarch, and now they've taken that. Of course, they still do have their 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 mind controlled slaves and servants, which they can use to perpetrate any number of uh, unbelievable crimes, mass shootings, robberies, crime, criminality. It, it doesn't matter. They can do anything they want. They learn how to do it on the individual level. And now they've ramped that up and they have extended it with this incredible... Remember, the technology is exploding in months instead of decades. They have Absolutely. technology now that is so far down the road that they can indeed do what Deborah is saying and are, in fact, employing it. We're in, in an invisible modern-day concentration camp. And we are being imprisoned with frequencies we do not see. It's like it's like corralling your dog in an electronic fence. Yeah, electric you can't fence. See it. Sure. And that's exactly what's happening to all of us. We're having cell phone towers along all our major freeways. They're disguised. They're hidden. When you do the antennasearch.com, uh, you will see that they say stealth and or hidden uh, in and on that website. And I can tell you also, I found that they are hiding uh, towers inside mobile oil gas signs in gas stations. They're disguising <laughs> them in flagpoles, in church steeples. Church steeples. God's own house, a microwave dissemination center. Wow. Yes, and more importantly, of course, Jeff, is the fact that because of the economy being the way it is, they are citing towers on our first responders, on uh, police, on properties, po 
police station, fire oh, station. They can, go, they can take their pick. They can go to any building owner and say, here, how would you like $50,000 a year or whatever they're going to pay them? That's exactly right. How much money and do they have? As much as they need. That's exactly right. And in fact, they're also locating them in schools. Now, people ask, well, why in schools? Well, this is to essentially create mind control for students because we now have the new Common Core curriculum. They're bringing in Wi-Fi. When I spoke with Barry Trower, and you'll see it in the interview on StopTheCrime.net, Wi-Fi is a known weaponized frequency, a known weaponized frequency. They're moving into all of our schools. You add that to the cell phone towers now that you're seeing on many school campuses. They're just bringing us down. This is a complete um, wireless takedown. And on top of all the GMOs and all of the other poisons and toxins that interact with all of these frequencies, they all interact. And it is a complete, total and numbing down of society. In fact, in the Aquarius group um, briefing that we were going to talk a little bit about tonight, which dovetails into the um, NASA war document, they told us there that, and you can find this document at the very top of StopTheCrime.net, and I want to add, all of these documents are free downloads for those that can do that. Are you if you're unable mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. download any of these documents for free, you can call the print shop, and they will print them off, and for print cost and postage, you can order any document you would like that you're hearing us talk about this evening, and the phone number for that is area code 707-586-9558. Once again, 707-586-9558. But in this secret document that was recently revealed to us, um, Jeff, is the Aquarius Group Operations Briefing. Mm -hmm. And on page one of that, it's a 50-page document. Uh, on page one, they talk about electromagnetic radio waves and microwave pulse mind warfare, how it has great advantages in that it, its desired subject. It can pinpoint a desired subject mm -hmm. or an entire population. Mm -hmm. And people do not realize that this is even being implemented. This is part of the silent weapons system. That is the declaration of war, the silent weapons quiet wars document, again, on StopTheCrime.net. This is a declaration of war. And, Jeff, I'm going to jump onto page four real quick of the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document because everyone needs to, of course, read this. It's also up on our website as a YouTube so that you can actually listen to it being read to you. But on page four it says, uh, this, of course, is a technical manual, and it was put together in the uh, 40s and 50s, and it's, been, it's fully implemented now. And it is exactly what the thinking of the international bankers are. It is a technical manual to subvert history and law, create global manipulation, enslavement, and mass genocide. And they tell us on page four that uh, this document must be secured from public scrutiny. But they go on to tell us this. The solution to today's problem uh, require an approach which is ruthlessly candid with no agonizing over religion, moral, or cultural values. <laughs> you have been selected for this project mm -hmm. because your ability to look at human society with cold ob objectivity and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capability without the loss of discretion or humanity. Such virtues are exercised in your own best interest. Do not deviate from them. This is why they have the cremation of care every year at Bohemian Grove. Sure. They cremate their care. And this document is what this grove moves forward on. It's what the Brookings Institute is behind. All the major corporations are in this silent weapons assault and attack upon global humanity. And the definition, of course, for the silent weapons attack, it is a stealth attack. They use um, subversive methods where people don't even realize they're being subdued by a weapon. They tell us on page 8 of the document that it is a biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of individuals.
I think this is one of the coolest features of today's smartphones. It knows up from down. Built into the circuitry is a tiny device that can detect changes in orientation and tell the screen to rotate. Now, let me show you uh, what it looks like using an old iPhone. There it is. It's an accelerometer. I'll tell you how this kind of chip works and how it's made, but first some basics of accelerometers. They have two fundamental parts a housing attached to the object, whose acceleration we want to measure, and a mass that, while tethered to the housing, can still move. Here it's a spring with a heavy metal ball. If we move the housing up, the ball lags behind stretching the spring. If we measure how much that spring stretches, we can calculate the force of gravity. You can easily see that three of these could determine the orientations of a three-dimensional object. Well, lying with a z-axis perpendicular to gravity, only the ball on the x-axis spring shows extension. Turn this on its side so that the z-axis points up and only the accelerometer along the spring on that axis stretches. So how does this phone and this chip measure changes in gravity? Well, more complex than the simple ball and spring model, it has the same fundamental elements. Inside the chip, engineers have created a tiny accelerometer out of silicon. It has, of course, a housing that's fixed to the phone and a comb-like section that can move back and forth. That's the seismic mass equivalent to the ball. The spring in this case is the flexibility of the thin silicon tethering it to the housing. Now, clearly, if we can measure the motion of this central section, we can detect changes in orientation. To see how that's done, examine three of the fingers on the accelerometer. The three fingers make up a differential capacitor. That means that if the center section moves, then current will flow. Engineers correlate the amount of flowing current to acceleration. This accelerometer fascinates me, but even more amazing is how they make such a thing. It would seem nearly impossible to make such an intricate device as this tiny smartphone accelerometer. At only 500 microns across, no tiny tools could craft such a thing. Instead, engineers use some unique chemical properties of silicon to etch the accelerometer's fingers in H-shaped sections. Now, to get an idea of how they do this, let me show you how to make a single cantilevered beam, like a diving board, in a small chunk of silicon. Empirically, engineers noticed that if they poured potassium hydroxide on a particular surface of crystalline silicon, it would eat away at the silicon until it forms a pyramidal-shaped hole. This occurs because of the unique crystal structure of silicon. To make a pyramidal hole in silicon, engineers cover all but a small square with a mask impervious to the potassium hydroxide. Now, it only etches within the square shape cordoned off by the mask. The potassium hydroxide dissolves silicon faster in the vertical than in the horizontal direction. This is why it makes a pyramidal hole. Now, to make a cantilevered beam, engineers follow these steps. First, mass the surface except for a U-shaped section. At first, the potassium hydroxide will cut two inverse pyramids side by side. As the etching continues, the potassium hydroxide begins to dissolve the silicon between these holes. If we wash it away at just the right point before it dissolves the silicon just underneath the mask, it will leave a small cantilevered beam hanging over a hole with a square bottom. Engineers make smartphone accelerometers using these same methods, but as you can picture, it takes a series of detailed masks to create the intricate structure of a smartphone accelerometer. While complex, a key point is that the whole process can be automated. This is absolutely essential in the miniaturization of technology. Engineers now make all sorts of amazing things at this tiny scale. Micro engines with gears that rotate 300,000 times a minute, nozzles in inkjet printers, and my favorite, micro mirrors that focus light in semiconductor lasers. I'm Bill Hammack, The Engineer Guy. This video is based on a chapter in the book, Eight Amazing Engineering Stories. The chapter features more information about this subject. Learn more about the book at the address below.